Hello YouTube, Ronan Kazi. Dang it, screwed it up again. <laughs> it's the division. And I've screwed that. I don't know what the problem. All I have to do is hit one button and it's still a problem for me. So this is the manhunt for Cursed. Dropped on Tuesday of this week. And at this point, I have done all the prerequisites and I'm going to go get him. And he is at Tidal Basin in a bounty. So I started up the bounty and I did some matchmaking. It was relatively easy. I started off with the red build I had mentioned the other day. I have a red build that is high repair, high elite damage reduction with a back, uh, what do I got on there? I think I got the uh, chest piece, gives you uh, health back escape in my mind at the moment and uh then i did a couple of jammer pulses and the last two missions i have been my max skill dps which i reverted back to the waveform and the uh momentum and perfect shock and all so it's a build that uh does peak damage. Guess there's always some controversy with waveform. Doesn't have to be. Just when you're using two damaging skills, it's probably the way to go. So I'm going down there. Now, first thing that happens when you. Spoiler alert! For everyone. Spoiler alert! All right, stop now if you haven't done it. You don't want to know. If you want to know, here's what's going to happen. As soon as you start, you are going to detect enemies on your radar. If you have that turned off, there's enemies right there. So I throw a turret. And I'm on heroic. I could push. Don't really want to push. I should pick up the turret and uh, reset it in a decent spot. I'm going to go over here to get some cover. And off we go. Giving you an update on other games on Destiny 2. We're getting ready to raid cross-platform some of the YouTubers that are on this channel and that are associated, and I'm associated with them. We do things together. Uh, we're all going to try to cross-play together. That's been fantastic. And we're not on the same platform, so it hasn't been as easy. So... Uh, I've only got to play on Destiny 2 with some of them. I don't normally play Destiny 2. I'm getting better at it, but uh, a couple of the folks are pretty good at it. I'm just going to be maximum defense and putting stuff in there. Here's the first person jumping in. Last time I had a manhunt, I didn't need a manhunt. I didn't need a group on the end, uh, but I'd rather not. When you're on Heroic, I'd rather have a group and not fail because I make a mistake on a place I've never been before. Uh, Elden Ring, uh, I've gone back and forth. I started with a wretched person. I did a video of a prophet. Uh, I don't know how to play Elden Ring, so I'm making a lot of mistakes. I liked playing the wretched person, but I also understand... Uh, with a Wretched, you're flat, so you're never going to hit the peak ultimate damage. And in these kind of games, you want to min-max. Uh, so right now, I'm grinding a little bit with the Prophet. I have some gameplay, but I'm still stuck in the same area because I want to get to level 20 before I move on. And I'm learning that I don't have to do some things. <laughs> I don't have to play a certain way, so I'll talk to you about that when I get an Elden Ring. Star Wars The Old Republic, I'm going to play... Stop showing you the new stuff and start going around on different characters. Really, my main characters. I have three main characters as on Swodar. And on the free version, you can't unlock. I got like 20 characters, but you can't unlock all of them. So I think you got to pick, you know, a couple. So I have a Imperial Agent, which is kind of my main. Then I have a Bounty Hunter, number two. And then I have a 
Republic Jedi number three. They have a class called Shadow Class. It's a dual bladed lightsaber, which I thought was cool. Anyways, there's that. ESO, going to start showing you with my main character. I did some videos with that. The Division, I ran through a subway. That video was out. That's just absolutely fire. When you think about the game, it's fantastic. Uh, something if you want a decent game that you can play on an older machine, that's a good game still. Tiny Tina's, I'm playing that. I have gone a couple levels off the starter, and it's gotten pretty good. I'm starting to understand the mechanics of that. Part of the problem with all these different games is they're different controls and everything and so me being an old geezer it's a little bit harder for me to keep track of all that stuff that's what's new on the game front so we go through here it's relatively easy and what I do now in my max build I might not be getting the max DPS but I can put a status effect on everyone oh heck that's my old uh that's the Vile Jammer build. Excuse my French, everybody. I must be serious and want to get through here. Yeah, I think if this is my Vile Jammer build, then uh, if I remember how I played this, uh, I'm going to kick ass because it's heroic. Now, I'm not as up in front as one of the guys is. He's way up front. But that's probably why he plays like that. In Rook, when he goes to Legendary, he probably doesn't see the difference. Mm, language, everyone. So I think I've mentioned to this once, I've mentioned this to you once before, I'm going to try to run back and get him after I pause, is I love it when they utilize maps for different, think the spawn points are different. So this is like the, you have traditional Tidal Basin, you have Tidal Basin, uh, Legendary, I think there's a couple other tidal basins, so it's nice to see that the spawns are a little bit different. It makes the map fresh still, for me at least. I'm gonna give the AI stuff a little bit of a rest. Uh, I, I, the idea I'm trying to express to you is starting to come full. And if I just characterize it real quick for you, is the following things. Number one, <clears throat> Silicon Valley makes businesses off of other people's data. Think about Facebook. Think about every business, Twitter, everything. You're using other people to generate value in your profit. So, for example, like a car tire place, the value is in that they change your car tire. Twitter's value is that we get on there and we have conversations on there. And someone else gets the valuation of that. Uber uh, takes away the taxi system where the taxi is a regulated body by the government and those companies have to pay their worker wages and yada, yada, yada. It puts that industry on its head where we'll have a uh, loose network thing. We provide you know, the customer with the car ride and we take a big percentage of the money, which which I've told you, the IRS, if you use your car for work at a normal place, you get 60 cents a mile. Uh, think about your Uber trips. If you had to travel 30 miles and they were, and the max they could charge you was 18 bucks. And if Uber, Uber got like three of it and the driver got 15 of it and you could tip what you wanted, that might be a good deal. No surge prices. See, I go up here and I'm going to press up front. I'm in the middle of the area. I got the vial jammer, so I'm going to try to put as much pressure on the enemy as I can. Not sure where to put the turret, so I'm going to put it in a defensive position. Because these people joined my group, I'm, I feel obligated to go. So I have a special, I have an obligation to go pick them up, I feel. 
Remember, this last mission is a bounty, so you're not under the same stringent. You don't have to sit there. You can just rejoin the group, go to a place, and come back in. So it's really easy. You don't don't sit there and wait for someone to pick you up. Part of the thing in playing somewhere where you've never been, even though it's a heroic, I'm going to be a little bit more careful. And I don't know if the people helping me on this bounty, if they're on this leg of it, or if they're, you know, joining a bounty or whatever, but I'm assuming they all need this done too. So part of the AI thing is why is chat GP, why do I bring up Silicon Valley? Why is it in the news now? We've always had uh, artificial intelligence. Why now? I'm throwing out there. I don't know. I got to do some research, but this is a way for them to get on the search. So not only do you put a search in, but you get decent results where you can automatically transition that into writing. Now, the writing isn't any good. It's not even good as a starter soup because you basically got to rewrite everything if you're a normal human. I did an experiment where I used very specific data that's not out there that yet. There's not a lot for it to pull from. No artificial intelligence. What it is, it's pulling stuff and pulling sources. And if there's not a lot of source material, it's not going to artificial intelligence anything. For example, I'll tell you about military uh, veteran homelessness. There is a lot of data on homelessness. I didn't know the difference between sheltered homeless and unsheltered homeless. Now, chat GPT could probably figure that out because there's enough definitions of it. Sheltered homeless is like when people go at night and they sleep in a shelter. Unsheltered is they sleep out in the woods, in their car, on a bench. And both the homelessness for veterans have gone down quite a bit since 2009, but it's still more than you'd want it. So chat GPT might be, Lord, I'm sorry, YouTube. I'm in a heroic. I'm so busy worried about chat GPT. I'm dying. So I find, find a place. I can't jump to him. Excuse me, burping. I'm going to go back to those places. The dogs are quiet because it's at night, night time. And uh, I'm going to jump back in. So that was my one thought on artificial intelligence. And really, uh, the other thing I posited to you, and I said it kind of as a throwaway statement, memory isn't a sign of intelligence, just a sign of memory. Now, this is where philosophers eat everyone's lunch because then you're going to say, well, what is intelligence? That's what we live for is people asking that question. Here, we got to go not do everything over again, but we got to fight in here. We had one guy who was AFK. Normally, I'd be bitching. But that guy was at a safe point, so maybe he was taking a dump or something. God rest him, but we all jumped to him. So it was kind of a fortunate event. And so one thing when you're thinking about everything... And you're thinking about what makes you intelligent. What makes you intelligent? When you've met someone that's intelligent, do they quote you a lot of facts? Or do they kind of synergize some things? Or do they kind of take some ideas and, and make new ideas from them? And am I saying just ideas are intelligence? No, that would be then a bias to uh, something that I, I think I'm okay at coming up with ideas. And what's a new idea? And I want you to think about who's programming the robot. If the person programming the AI isn't creative, how is the AI going to be creative? So that's a self-referencing system. And that those are always hard to bootstrap yourself. And I understand what it's doing. It's iterating. So if I taught it about the PACT Act, the experiment I ran out of it, yes, I could teach it where it'd be very good. And all I'm doing is teaching it how I think. That's not intelligent. So 
if it's a tool like a hammer, and that's what I would say, a hammer is a great tool for pounding things, nails into wood. And so am I mad at the hammer because it's, uh, let's call it an artificial strength enhancer, if I change the name of it? No, it's a tool. ChatGP is a tool for searching things and not having to read. So you're trusting that the programmer knows what things to parse, what are the important things. And I can tell you, it doesn't do that. They say it can program. So uh, can I do this? Can I just get in chat GP and say, make a program like Tornado Notes for me? And is it going to program that? Or is it just removing the typing portion, which is going to save me? In the case of Ronan Kazi, what about my shitty grammar? It's going to fix my shitty grammar because I'm never going to have shitty grammar again. And here's what I'm going to tell you to all the people that thinks grammar is important. If a robot can do it, if that's what chat GPT is going to do, this part gets a little bit hard. Look at what I do here. And I've told you this before. I'm going to go up to the wall and kill these people with my belt. Oh, I'm sorry. What that does is that starts aggro and they're going to come to try to find me because I'm the one doing this damage. So you're going to watch them run around and try to get me. And these guys aren't prepared for that. So because I can't talk to them, this is my fault because I should tell them I'm going to bring them back to me and pulse them till they come back to me. So they're rushing through those guys. Internet, I'm sorry I got shot. Took a big, had to have unbreakable fire off. And if that's not, <laughs> did you see what I did there? I used a heel kit and I shouldn't have never used a heel kit. And I had already had unbreakable but I don't want to fail. So you can see that's a time where I'm like reloading. I try not to reload all the time because in some times when you're doing a legendary, it's a bad thing. I don't play that mode that much, but it's the penalty so great that I kind of watch myself. That's why I don't reload a ton. Like before each section. So long story short, with all this stuff, grammar's not that important because a robot can do it. The things that make you human are the things that are important. Your creativity, your ability to adapt and overcome. If you ever want to have a uh, kind of look about armies and, uh, and, and why do I bring up armies? Armies are an example of leadership at its worst in that you're going to be 100% follow my orders. And the problem with follow my orders is this. If our objective is to, you know, go get this guy. But we're going to do it a bunch of different ways. The reason this game's fun is it doesn't say... Everyone use the same kit and go kill that guy. We have different things that we've come up to solve this. We see the direction where we have to go, and we all take different paths. One guy up there goes over there. Brazil guy goes up over there. I go up forward because in my setup, I can do an AOE thing, and I can spot people for stuff. So I'm always going to be in a little more damaged area, an area where I'm going to take more damage. Not a damage area, sorry. Maybe I knew you chat GPT to talk for me. Here's what's important what words mean. Let's we're gonna change the definition each time, and that's fine, but then we gotta change definition. We gotta say to everyone, when I say it, that means this now. And that's okay, but I want you to think how burdensome that would make communication if every time we talked we had to give the definition how I like to use the words. So that's what kind of social conventions are that these are the kind of things. Not all social conventions are good because there's a time when uh, negative things for our society were social, social conventions 
where other people felt the burden of them. We, I don't think anyone wants that. When you're on top, when it's favoring you, you go, hey, what's the problem? But when you are getting the result of those things, you don't want it. No one wants to be singled out by their city government for whatever. No one wants to be in a homeowner's association and being told that your shutters are the wrong color. No one wants any of those things. Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, no one wants that. We don't have to get to the extremes. So, talk more about that another day. But that's basically the thing. Why is it so important now, now, now? It's not intelligent. You get a bunch of chungas on here, if it was legendary, this would be hard as crap because they would be just giving you the uh, hive treatment. Look, there's two of them. Oh, that pulser was there. I just EMP'd it. I'm in a bad spot, but this is heroic. I'll be okay. This is normally when I say thank you for subscribing, liking, Hitting the bell, commenting, hitting the bell. I do some lunch stuff. Uh, I know you don't care what I eat. I'm going to try to get you some more either exciting or pathetic things. (laughs) I came up with an idea. I was talking to Super Slanky, and he was having tacos. And if you don't watch the other thing, I said, we're going to have unstructured tacos this week which are nachos because it's basically the same ingredients how you package it we're still going to have corn tortillas like for hard tacos they're just going to be chips instead of it's not a taco I get it it's an unstructured taco so I was thinking more things and I asked the question what other foods like that potatoes are like that hash browns, french fries mashed potatoes, baked potato. That's a whole genre of potatoes. Basically the same thing. You can put the same seasoning on all of them, but they're different. And they have different names. But a French fry is not the same as a hash brown. So I would propose in my insane world, one would be the what was that game where you had to pick up the sticks? Pixie sticks would be anyone, someone, Bueller, anyone, someone. Straws would be. What's my third one gonna be? Porridge is gonna be <laughs> right, it's it's kinda hard. Don't have a lot of adjectives for all the things that potatoes could be. Like hash browns and French fries. Anyways, gosh, I got way off topic. That's what's going on. I think I go down here trying to save somebody, and it's one of those things. I end up dying. This guy end up resin saving the day. I'm like, I don't know if we're close or far. I can tell you from the video, we're pretty close to the end. But at this point, I don't know if we're far, if we have to go over the gate again. We have one guy that's just working on that. That's nice of this person to res me first. Thank you, person. Nasty fireman. You rescued me first. Thank you, sir. And there we go. There it is. Manhunt. Cursed. Thanks, YouTube. Ronan Kazi. Out.